In this presentation, we're going to consider how to live in the country on a low budget. And in particular, in this session, we're going to look at building a tiny house. So what is a tiny house? A tiny house is a stick-built uh, little cabin that fits on a trailer. The reason it's on a trailer is they are often built off-site and then moved to the location where they're going to be used. These units are not designed typically to be a travel trailer to move day after day. They are designed to be moved to the location and stay there, although could be moved occasionally as needed. Before we uh, get into the main portion of our presentation, I'm going to show you some different creative designs that I found on the internet for tiny houses. Tiny houses do lend themselves to creativity, uh, although being creative costs more money. And the focus of this presentation will be how to do it on a budget. But just to give you some ideas, here's some creative designs that I found on the internet. This one looks like a cabin, but you can see it's off the ground and you can see the wheels on the side if you look really carefully. This one is quite camouflaged. It looks as though it's a cabin in the woods, but the flowers cover up the fact that it's a trailer. I was intrigued by this one. This young man, 13-year-old Greg Phil, um, lives in Iowa. And his parents live on four acres, and he proposed to them that he wanted to build a tiny house because, as I recall, he had seen a tiny house on a television show. So he asked his parents if he could build one on the back of the property, and they said yes on the condition that he raised all the money himself. And then his dad would help him build the tiny house when he needed help. So uh, Greg embarked on uh, doing work and raising the money, and then through the money he had, as well as some bartering, he was able to build the tiny house for only $1,500. And this project got some attention, and he's been on uh, several newscasts uh, as a result. Uh, he now plans to build another tiny house, probably a little bigger. Now, if you're going to live in a tiny house and be off-grid and not have uh, running water uh, from a well, uh, maybe temporarily until you get things set up. This is one option for collecting water is off the roof. If you put gutters on your tiny house and run the downspouts into a barrel to collect the water, you could then use an RV pump uh, with 12 volt battery to run the water inside and have running water. And then you could use a camping filter to filter the water that you're going to drink. And if your uh, roughing it property doesn't have uh, you the ability to hook into a septic system, you might consider a, either an outhouse or in the tiny house you could have a composting toilet. A composting toilet does not use any water and the uh, refuse decomposes and then you just remove it. And if you want to have a washer and dryer, of course, you could wash in a sink and hang them up outside to be primitive, but if you wanted to be fancy and you had a, a generating power with solar or a generator, you could run a unit like this. This is a washer and dryer in combination, and, and it's small, and it only runs on 110 volts as compared to a home dryer normally running on 220. So this is an option if you wanted to have a washer and a dryer. And then if you want to be able to grow food, um, this unit here is pretty cool. They built a tiny house on a trailer, and then they built an addition to the tiny house, which accommodated a greenhouse and, so, and a deck and some space to grow food. And so uh, you'll notice it's two trailers. So if you were to move, you would, you would take the one trailer and with the deck and move it and take the other trailer with the tiny house and then hook it back up together. Now if the units are not movable, 
such as these uh, cozy cottages that you uh, can find on the internet that are often in city home backyards. They can be a studio, they can be a teenager's home, uh, like a dorm room, they can be a um, guest house. But here are a couple of cozy cottages to give you some ideas of those kind of uh, small structures. By the, way, by the way, you'll notice this one has a chimney. So they've got a fireplace in there. You can see it through the window. You can also purchase prefabricated tiny houses. This particular tiny house is very artsy and creative and in design and it is prefabricated um, and is available from a commercial company in Cedar Woolley, Washington. I will provide the link and the uh, video description if you're interested in seeing their offerings. If you want to be really economical, you might buy a storage shed from a place like Lowe's or Home Depot's. This picture here is one that I found on the Lowe's website. You can look it up on their website to find pricing, but you can let your mind wander how easy it would be to take this particular uh, design and turn it into some interesting and comfortable living space with a loft uh, for sleeping and so forth. Our guest today is the owner of this tiny home and the name of this home is Habitier Tiny Homes. Well, the issue is a tiny home in relation to those of you who really desire to get out into the country. It can be used, a tiny home can be used for um, stair step towards getting into your new home. Um, you can live in it. It has all the amenities needed to accomplish uh, nice living while you're getting ready for your uh, next move. The tiny home that we chose was a trailer that was eight and a half by 20 feet long. Very simple. I wanted it just as least expensive as possible because it was a whole new venture for me. I didn't know if we could put the right stuff in there to be, even be able to survive such a small space. But as you can see, we started off with a trailer and we just started building. I had a, an idea in mind, but I wanted it to be quicker than many of them that I've seen. So the roof sloped one direction and that's it. Made it really simple. And you can see that it's just like building a house. You frame it with your rough framing. You tie vec it so it's uh, watertight and uh, airtight. And then you do your siding. We chose lap siding. The size of it is not over 10 feet wide and not over 13 and a half feet tall as you're going down the road. That way you don't have to have any pilot cars or permits or anything like that. That's the law. You would only need a wide load sign on the back. As I build, you can see there's different, we had different materials sitting around and I incorporated those materials so I wouldn't have to go out and buy stuff. So my framing material was two by fours and the ceiling two by sixes. So the walls would be R11 or 13. I had some of both and so I put it in there. And the ceiling was R19. R stands for retention. Um, the quietness, once you're inside this tiny home, it's extremely quiet. It's uh, It could be in a setting that has some railroad noise or airplanes or something, and, and you would find it very difficult to hear all that noise. So you can see that the 
two by four framing from the point of that connection there. In other words, an eight foot wall, standard eight foot wall we did on the inside of my barn so that we wouldn't have to pull it out until that smaller portion on the top would then be framed once it got out of the building. And that's only because I didn't have a 14 foot garage door opening. Mine was only 12 feet. So I would then uh, have to build it the way I did. So this shows the interior and you have, it's a regular shower stall. I mean, regular fire, uh, a fiberglass shower stall. One thing I didn't want was a shower that you'd have to, you know, cram into and hardly be able to survive. I like a good hot shower in the morning. And the space in where that shower stall is, is where the hot water heater was down below. And then up above would be the closet, which you'll probably see in a movie here coming up. The word habitar is uh, a Portuguese flavor. It was a hotel we stayed in when we were in Brazil and just decided to, I'm into signs and stuff. So I decided to name it Habitar. And on the inside, it can just be extremely comfortable, just like a regular house, but more miniature. It has a full shower, a toilet, and a sink, which means then you have a full bath. And there was plenty of room inside there to um, move about comfortably with a pocket door that closes off the bathroom. Um, this is a view from the other side, and you can see then that there, there's plenty of room. Um, the table folds down if you need more room. That's kind of my story on the inside of the tiny home. Basically, my goal for doing this was in case a person needed it, be a perfect dorm room, for instance. Or if you're online doing college, it'd be a little home of your own. It could be also a starter home, bring, bring it on the property so that you could just uh, live in it while you're building your, your real home that you would end up having. There are people that I know here that be give anything to live in a small home like this for their real home. <laughs> and uh, that's all that they would need. Now is uh, I'll just move on to a little movie clip of me going around the outside and then also of going on the inside. This tiny home over here, I thought I would just share a few things about financial elements to this thing. Um, this trailer I purchased as a used trailer because basically when the tiny home goes to the place it's going to be, you're sort of not using that trailer anymore. But it's a super strong structure that you can build a tiny home on and you can take that wherever it needs to be. It's not made to be just on the road at all times. But it is, a, it is a solid foundation, you might say. And uh, financially speaking, everything that is in this is either overstocked items, super discounted items. I wanted to see as an experiment, is there a way that I can build this tiny home dirt cheap? And so here we go. The front porch, you can see it accommodates a small spot that you can sit and have a hot drink or some iced tea, whatever your weather is. And that one was a closeout for 28 bucks, the whole thing there. This 
porch is such that it takes four bolts and it comes right off. It's not attached to the trailer, uh, to, to the building itself. <clears throat> but you could have two guys take and just lift it off, put it in the back of your pickup, and now you can hook up to a vehicle that will be able to do a super tight corner turn. Then these steps are the same way, where you have two bolts, the step situation comes right off. So now you're ready to move it if you desire. The dimensions of this is the trailer is 20 feet by eight and a half wide. So when you take, and I did two by fours because I wanted the maximum width on the inside for usable space. And believe me, two by four on this small of a structure is plenty of insulation that uh, it can cook you out in, in, in many cases. That little window above the sink on the inside, that's where the air conditioner would go if you choose to need an air conditioner. Okay, so we'll just walk around this. Uh, one thing I did is I, I wanted it only 110, not, uh, not anything elaborate and, uh, you know, there's no major big hot water heater, there's not a washer and dryer, you know, that kind of stuff. So I wanted it just almost like an RV where you could plug it in. Although, this unit is made for actually a generator attached to your house to run the power for your whole house. But this receptacle I wanted as compared to just a regular cord plug-in. And uh, when we go on the inside, you'll see why. Um, so the height is actually 13 feet, five inches high total. And uh, the reason for that is any state highway, the highest you can get to go down the road without a permit is 13 and a half feet. So I'm one inch under that requirement. Width is the same way. You can be up to 10 feet wide without pilot cars. And that was my goal too, is that at any moment I can just take this and go if I have to. The only requirement for the width is that you have a yellow sign on the back that says, it's, a, it's usually a banner, that says wide load. Then you're totally legal going down the road, pulled by any big size pickup. And uh, attached to the trailers. Many of these are such where they are um, removable from the trailer, but I wanted this fastened for good and there's long bolts that attach there's four on this side four on the other side a couple in front and back um, as you can see it's a double axle the plumbing underneath I guess we'll try to get under there the plumbing underneath has the uh, drain and uh, the hot and cold water <clears throat> you need a especially in eastern Washington, you would need a spot where you could go ahead and take and drain all the water out. And so that's the way that is. Outside, uh, electric, front and back. It's licensed uh, to be able to hit the road. And I wanted it as simple and quick as possible, so I made it so that the roof, instead of having a peak and drain on both sides, the water would drain just one direction and that's it. So why don't we go on inside now?
you can see there's actually plenty of room here to get in and out and uh, the door is a good quality entry door metal and uh, then we go on the inside we've got a sink very simple almost halfway between a uh, mini sink for for uh, those that are doing the wine thing uh, between that and a big full-scale sink now the whole idea here is you have your basics and so it's simply a sink I guess you could put a garbage disposal if you choose and then these were on closeout Home Depot this refrigerator it's a perfect size for something this this size I know they make small ones like this you can put on a counter that might be adequate for you uh, this fridge is is plenty nice you get that at Home Depot or Lowe's um, it was normally five and a quarter then it went down to 210 and then it went and, and then I ended up getting it for like a hundred and uh, 26 bucks or something like that close out so you'll see I'm gonna mention that as I go along this couch happens to be from Walmart I guess if you actually lived in here I'd rather have a, uh, a hide a bed but this folds out to where you can lie down sleep on it this uh, couch Walmart regular 125 got it for uh, 37 it was a close out then same thing with the windows everything's just you know wherever I can get something very very cheap that's what my goal was for this thing down inside of this little cabinet is a 12 gallon hot water tank and up in here it would be a closet you could hang possibly some clothes it's actually a pretty minimal uh, space here but in here we have actually a full um, bathroom with a regular size shower fiberglass and then this could be your linen um, for the, it also has a exhaust fan up there and the lights over here I don't have this plugged in right now so sorry if you can't see it real well but you'll also see that don't forget the pocket door idea because that way that really helps with the minimal space it just tucks right into the wall plenty of wall uh, electricals all the way around the whole idea for this spot was this would be a metal um, ladder just wrought iron metal little platform three inch sticking out so it wouldn't have anything to do with obstructing your movements this spot would be a wall mount TV um, maybe be able to come out with it you know but if it was stationary that's fine too that's why the plug in there and that way you can either sit in the couch and watch or you can fold it down to a bed and still be watching this is the location for that this right here would be a plug-in electric um, like a fireplace that looks just like fireplace that would be the source of heat or another one that I found out if you're talking electric this high they have these little radiators I'm telling you this would be five degrees outside and you have this little radiator heater this place is just toasty very nice uh, up here you have two lamps lights that are over top of the table uh, we were in Brazil visiting and we stayed at a hotel called the Habitar and this hotel was what I named this for a little sign here I made a sign and put it there just you know once you get into these things it's kind of like your little baby 
sort of like a like a pet and it's like those that have hot rods I, you know they they named them almost you know this table will fold down i only have, I have that there for the moment but i have hinges that will that thing will slide down has a piano hinge on the back you always got to think of space so anyway that table i made stained goes down these are just matching for that here's the breaker box i was telling you about where you have it's a 30 amp unit so one breaker is for my lights another breaker for the plugins and then i have stronger wires um instead of it's uh it's 12 goes over up here to the top where you could have a microwave um down under here is a plug underneath through here on the wall so you could have a countertop hot plate so that's pretty much it there's up above is a fan with a light and then over there is the loft if you had some kids um, or you wanted to store some things the loft is carpeted and i think that kind of well takes care of it um, i guess what i'd like to say is that i believe in this nation we're going to have times coming up that are very uh challenging and uh, the movement to get out of the violent cities is probably a real one seems like the times we're in at the moment COVID and so forth it doesn't seem to be doing anything but ramping up, even if it was a master plan that started it to begin with, who knows. But we also know that, especially in Eastern Washington, it may not be that exciting to live in a tent. Although I've seen some that are, you know, the double walled army tents and so forth, wood stove. By the way, this is possibility that a person could do a wood stove in here where that stove would be. Um, the electric. I'll mention one more thing outside when we get outside. Okay, we're outside and the idea that I was going to have if this was going to be stationary and in place, hooked up to everything, including septic. My idea would be to expand it slightly and it would be a living room and a master bedroom. And here's how that would be. Right underneath those upper windows would be the roof line coming out, matching the other metal. It would come out about this far, maybe 12 feet. And uh, this window would open up. This window then would go over there for the uh, escape out of the master bedroom in case of fire. In other words, a legal regress window. So that would be that. And then right here in the living room would be big windows. The whole idea would be this amazing view from this tiny home. We have a little Mercedes wood stove. Yeah, Mercedes actually made a wood stove and it's glass fronted just be a classic little beautiful uh, visual centerpiece, but also would actually heat up the entire place with wood. And then at this point would be a six foot slider glass door. So you could either go up the stairs and in that way, or you could come through here and enter it through here. So you'd have bathroom uh, you could then make that more into a dining room made main because um, see that that table would be gone at that point so you could literally have a dining room there then you've got your kitchen come down the stairs you'd have living room wood heat through the doors into the bedroom then you have a complete tiny home at that point this one is 206 square feet 
adding that to it would make it 450 square feet. And a person could say, man, that's small. You know, with this addition to it, it would be fantastic. And this addition would take no more plumbing. It would only be electrical for plug-ins, lights, switches at the entries. 